find exactly one head. That's the problem with, with spending out the whole, the whole thing on. So the head could be here. What if, well, if, the, if the head is over here, what do these other things have to be? Well, if, well they, these got to be tails. Or the head could be, another way of doing this, the head could be here, and the tails could be here. And, if, and the third way of doing it is that the head could be here, and the tails could be here. So we can just physically see that the, the way you can put a, you know, how can you get, flip three coins and get exactly one head? The answer is three different ways, either this way, this way, or this way. And we saw it physically here, this way, this way, they all represent exactly one head among the three coins. But how do you generalize this to a formula? Well, I think one way of understanding how it goes to a formula is by thinking about, you're flipping three coins, think of them as three, three slots. And you have to pick one of those slots to be an H. How many ways can you do that? Well, I can either put the H at the beginning, I can put the H in the middle, or I can put the H at the end. I have three different choices, like three people on a committee, and one of them got to be a, sub, a committee of size one. I have three people to choose. I want to choose this person to be the subcommittee, or that person to be the subcommittee, or that person to be the subcommittee. So the question is, how many different ways can you choose from three choices to start with? One of them has to be pulled out to be considered the head. So we know the answer is three. But how would you write that by another mathematical expression? We're looking for another expression that would, you're flipping 25 coins, what's the chance of getting 15 heads and 10 tails? Well, here we say one, two, it's easy to just write them out. And then, but with 25 coins, you have millions of possibilities. You can't write them out. So you have three coins. You want one of them to be a head. What mathematical expression that we learned about could predict that there's going to be three of them? Now, again, the fact that there's three of them is not a shock, because we just see that here's one, here's two, and here's three. It could be the beginning, the middle, and the end. Well, again, physically, one, two, three. So the fact that there are three of them is not in doubt, I hope. But the question is, how can you predict that there are three of them? And you can say, well, I can use some logic. I'll say, well, the, the, the head's got to be either the beginning, the middle, or the end. So that's why there were three of them. That's true. But when you have 25 coins and you've got to be 17 heads and eight tails, how do you predict that? So I'm asking, how would you predict it? Using what formula that we learned about previously, which maybe nobody practiced, but we learned about it, that would solve, that would come up with a prediction for how many different ways you can get three coins and one of them could be a head. Okay, get more, let's see. Try it, I don't think we'll lose. What? Is it by using the combination? Exactly, well, so the answer is the combination. combinations. You have three people to choose from, three people on a committee. You want to choose one of them to be in the subcommittee. In other words, you want to put the person A, person B, person C. And how many different ways can, can, you, can you pull them out? Either A by himself, B by herself, or C by herself. So we have different subcommittees. We call that C, uh, three choose one. By common sense, they've got to come out to three. By the, by the factorial formula, it comes out to three as well. Three minus one factorial and one factorial. I'm hoping you, again, if you haven't looked at this stuff since we learned about it, you've got to take the possibility of that. So this is three times two times one. This is two times one, this is one, this cancels, this is equal to three. So we're saying that if, you want, if you're flipping three coins and one of them has to be a head, how many ways you can do it? Three ways, because we're choosing one of those slots to be a head. So you can relate the combinations to, the, to what we're trying to do right now. So for example, if you're flipping, flipping three coins and you want to have exactly two heads, like this would be this one here, two heads would be, uh, this one, this one, or this one. One's in a circle, so there are three of them. How many ways you can get it? Well, you can have you know, heads, heads, followed by a tail, heads, tails, heads, or tails, heads, heads. Arrow here. And if you're thinking of it, so think of this particular sequence. This is one sequence where you get exactly two heads. We're looking, we're looking now at this particular problem. Exactly two heads. So how many ways can you, can you have other similar type of sequences? It's like you know, two heads at the beginning, two heads at the end, two heads in the middle. So in general, it's going to be three choose two. You have three coins to start with, three blanks. Two of them have to end up filled out with heads. So how many ways? I can, I can pick the first and the second. I can pick the first and the third. It'll be heads, tails, heads. I can pick the second and the third. It'll be tails, heads, heads. How many ways can I be pulling these out? By the combination method, you get three choose two, and which comes out to how much? How much is three choose two? That was, again, a question we worked on. How much is three choose two? 
like, I, I, I think uh, for them exactly one head is, which we know there were three of them, but that three could be predicted by three choose ones by this analysis. And therefore, this answer here, which is just, this is just one particular sequence, HTT is just one of them. But we know there are three similar ones. So you multiply this answer, three choose one, which is three, times one out of eight, and you finally get three out of eight. So the final answer, now, if you understood even to, you know, not, not the whole thing, you understood to a large extent how this formula developed, we should be able to generalize this to any problem. In other words, the formula requires you plugging in three numbers. How many coins you have, okay, three coins, four coins, five coins, so three coins we had, the three goes over here, but the three also goes over here, because when you're trying to figure out how many tails you're gonna get, take the number of coins minus the number of, so the three appears twice in the formula, so the n, the n is the letter we're gonna use for the number of coins, it appears twice in the formula. The one refers to the fact that we're looking for exactly one head. This could be a one, it could be a two, it could be a three, it could be a zero, but now, now we're doing plug x equals one. The chance of a, this one, this one over here and this one over here is gonna be the same number. We're gonna call that number x, by the way, little letter x eventually. X will be the number of heads that you're looking for, but we want one head. Well, how many tails are there? Well, if there's one head and there are three coins, so this will also, the x is gonna appear three times in the formula, referring to the fact that there were three you know, the, the number of heads got to be subtracted from the total number of coins. And this thing of what's the one here? That's going to be the chance of a head. Now, what letter are we going to use for it? I said to Woody before, we let little letter P. So we have P here. What's going to be over here? One minus P. So now, now we have the formula. So at this point, I can put together the formula without the derivation. And hopefully now you see where it comes from if you're, if you're following this. So, the, so X equals x, that's totally confusing, right? But this is the capital letter refers to the random variable in general. And little, little, little letter x refers to the actual number of heads. So, so I would say p of x equals x means when I'm flipping a certain number of coins, what's the chance of getting specifically three heads, two heads, one head? x is, in this case, x was equal to one. This was the little, this is the capital letter x, and this is the little letter x over okay. here. So, um, this, this is a confusing, I'm going, to, I'm going to explain this again in a second. So the formula says you figure out how many coins you have, n equals the number of coins, get some place, n equals the number of coins. But of course, we're not going to just apply this to coins, but it's going to be number of trials. Of course, for example, let's say you're looking at radiators. Some are good and some are bad. It's called a binomial because it has bi, meaning two, gnome, meaning categories or names. This problem only works if you have exactly two categories, heads and tails, good or bad, true or false, only two categories. So we're going to call it flipping the number of coins, but it's also the number of trials. X is the number of success. And, and each trial, we're not going to call it heads or tails, because that's too limiting. We're going to talk about success and failure. So success and success would be like the head and failure, but the two possibilities are success and failure. And finally, we need to have the chance of a, of a success, the chance of a head, which in this case is the chance of a success. And that's going to be symbolized by the little letter P. So in this case, if I had to rewrite this problem, say n choose one, three, uh, n choose well, let's write the problem. So you start out with the number of coins, and you choose, can somebody tell me what letter goes over here? Raise your hand if, you want to, if, you, if you're following this and you want to sort of at this point, I want you to create the formula this day. Is it a little p? No, but the little p is going to be the chance, the chance of a head, the chance, one minus the chance of a head. Okay. Uh, somebody hasn't raised their hand yet. Uh, yes. Little x. What? Little x. Little x. Because remember, x refers to already down someplace. Anyway, x equals an actual x equals the actual number of successes that you're looking for in that particular problem, the actual number of successes. So n should we have, again, not, so this is a continuation of the de development of the binomial distribution formula. So the n choose x corresponds to the three choose one, because we have three coins, and one of them has to be a head. In general, how many coins you have, and how many you want to be heads or successes. And now, can somebody tell me the next part of the formula? It's going to be the very next thing after this point, following this particular pattern that we developed. Yes, well. We want the chance of a head. Now, how many heads? Head, 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 tails, tails, tails. So each head times head times head is P times P times P. So how many heads are there? There are X heads. So P to what power? What'd you say? 
P to the X power. So this P to the X power corresponds to one hand.